we're going to take a look at getting to your position now. This is an important thing when we're up there playing a match, knowing where to move on the court and, and how to get there, um, especially once the ball is put into play. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about for the, the first half of the season is uh, a 4-2 offense. Um, and we're, so we're going to talk about where to go when we're serving and when the other team is serving. And the 4-2 offense is a case where we have two setters and then four hitters. So the setter is always in the front row, so we're just going to limit the amount of movement that our um, setters have to do. They won't be running from the back row, cuts down on a bit of confusion, especially early on in the season. Um, so we'll move on to other offenses anyway later in the season as we get going. So first things first, we're going to talk about the overlap rule. Uh, this applies before the ball has been served by our team or the other team. Once the server, whether it's the other team or our team, contacts the ball, we're allowed to switch positions. Uh, we're going to use this later when we talk about our offense, whether it's a 4-2, a 5-1, or a 6-2. Uh, as a back row player, you can't line up in front of the player in front of you. So you can't get closer to the net than the player in front of you. So the player in four can't be behind the player in five, the player in three can't be behind the player in six, uh, and so on. So we'll have these orange arrows throughout the, the next few diagrams to show you where you, you can't overlap. You also can't cross over the player next to you. So the player in four can't go to the right of the player in three before the ball is contacted. And the player in two can't be to the left of the player in three. And the player in three has to stay between those two. Same goes for the back row. So legally, we could all huddle in zone four, so long as we all stay to, on the correct side of the player or players to our sides and in front or behind us. Uh, if they wanted to, the two middle back players could back all the way up, which is fine because the back row player stayed behind the front row player and they didn't overlap to the right or left of the people beside them. Or our middle back and right back players could shift to the right side so long as they don't cross over each other or cross in front of the players in front of each of them. So how does that apply to the 4-2 offense? Well, let's, we're going to go through the rotations. And we'll look at each rotation when we're serving and then when we're receiving serve. So this is called rotation one here, where we've got our, our setter back to serve, Setter one, back to serve, and setter two is the net in position three. So as the server contacts the ball, our players move. Outside hitter one moves to the left side to block, and setter two moves to the right side to block. Outside hitter two in the back row is going to move to middle back to play defense, and middle blocker two moves to the left side to play defense. And then setter one can just move straight ahead up to right back play defense after she serves. So that's when we're serving. Now when we're receiving, we shift around a little bit and we try to form that W shape. Now the orange arrows show you who's in front and behind each other and then the, the pink arrows show you who's to the side and how they don't overlap. So we've kind of squished that set or two in a little bit but they can't cross over to the right of middle blocker one. So we want to have a little think about this before we go to, to receive serve. So when the server contacts the ball on the other side, we can move. Of course, first these, these people in the W want to receive the ball. So we're going to make the pass. And then as soon as that ball is contacted, the setter is going to run over to the spot where she's going to receive the ball and be able to set it to the outside hitter or to middle blocker one. Now, we also have the option to leave the outside hitter. Instead of having them run all the way over to the left side of the court, they could stay on the right side for that first hit and then run over to the left side to block. So once we hit the ball over, they would run over to the left side and block. So that's rotation one. There's a lot of running around on that one. Rotation two is a little bit simpler. 
Her, the only two people swapping spots are setter two and outside hitter one, who's the server. The setter doesn't have to worry about, so setter one in the back doesn't have to worry about overlapping with the server because they're off the court. Uh, and when they come on, they've contacted the ball already. So there we go. There are our two players moving. Now, when we're receiving serve, we still try to keep that W shape. And these arrows show you how we're not overlapping. Now, the remember, the pink ones are the side to side. The orange are front and back. And then when the server contacts the ball, and in fact, we can see the front row players by the blue tint and the green of the back row players. So we pass the ball up to the setter. The setter doesn't have to move in this particular rotation. The middle blocker one comes around in front of setter two, who's going to get that second touch and set either middle blocker one or outside hitter two. Now we're going to move on to rotation three. So now we've got middle blocker one back to serve. So outside hitter two pinches in. In the front row, we want to get ready to get to our spot. So outside hitter two is going to go out to the left side. And middle blocker two and setter two can kind of stay in their own spot. Whereas setter one in the back row wants to get to the right back position. And middle blocker one has a long way to run over to cover left back on defense. Now, when we're receiving serve, we still, again, we're trying to form that W shape. Here are our arrows showing who's next to who and who's in front of who. And when we contact this ball, we're going to have the outside hitter and the middle blocker switch spots. There's a bit of crossing here, so you want to make sure that you know where your middle blocker is if you're the outside hitter too, so you don't go crashing into her. And just have a quick word to say, hey, which way are you going to your spot? Okay, I'm going to cut through really sharp to, to get to setter two. Whereas the outside hitter might say, okay, I'll loop around, around back. Just to make sure that you communicate and you, you know where you're going. So now we'll move on to rotation four. This is when setter two is back to serve. So we have a new setter in the front row. And you can, again, see them bunched up. We want to leave middle blocker there getting ready to, to block because they're the ones who have to move around a lot on the net. So we have setter one and outside hitter two getting ready to cross over each other. And in the back row, setter two is just going to run right down straight to, to right back. And middle blocker one shifts over to the left. They cross over outside hitter one. And so as soon as that ball is contacted... Now, in rotation four, we, we might be a little bit lopsided here. In fact, we've got this colored wrong, right? Setter two is in the back row, not in the front row. So we've got setter one at the net. That's our setter in the front row. Here you can see setter two is behind outside hitter two, but just barely. So we want to make sure when we have that W, we have outside hitter two a little bit further forward than setter two so they don't overlap. And when the server contacts the ball, that's when we can move into position. Again, there's a bit of crossing there. So middle blocker two wants to make sure they take a path where they're not going to crash into outside hitter two. And now you can see setter two's even got the right color. Now there's another option to try to simplify. So instead of having the W, because maybe we're worried about setter two, overlapping with outside hitter two, we could stack everyone over in the corner and have outside hitter two shifted over to the left because that's where they're going to hit from anyway. And middle blocker two just wouldn't have passing responsibilities. Their job would be to just get off the net and get ready to hit in the middle of the court and kind of follow setter two, setter one over towards the right side of the net. So that's an option. So this is what it looks like. We have these three, setter one, middle blocker two, and outside hitter two stacked very close together. 
and all of our back row players are kind of shifted over in a little cup around the, the right side of the court. So that one can be a little bit tricky. Now, when it's our serve in rotation five, we have outside hitter two back. Setter two can get set up in their position in right back. There's no uh, overlapping when the server is back because you can also serve from anywhere along that end line anyway. So and as soon as you contact the ball, you've got to come onto the court anyway. So that's the overlapping rules don't count anymore once you've contacted the ball. So here we have setter one standing just to the left of middle blocker two. As soon as the ball is contacted, they're the only one really that moves. That gets over the right side to get ready to block. And when we're receiving serve, this is what we look like. Here's the, here are the arrows to show you who's in front of who and who's next to who. We've got, again, we've got a W shape. And when we pass the ball, we just have to watch out for a middle block or two who's going to be coming around in front of setter one to hit that ball in the middle. And outside hitter one's already kind of on the, out, the left side, so they're in a good spot to hit their ball. Rotation six isn't too bad. Uh, our server just has a long run over to their spot over on the left back. And then setter two switches to the right side. And outside one, hitter one is standing just to the right of middle blocker one. And they're going to run out to the left side to block. So not too much confusion when we're serving for rotation six. Now when we're receiving serve, again, we're going to have our, our old favorite, the W. We've got our three in blue in the front row. We've got our three in green in the back row, and this is how they line up. So we can see we've got plenty of space. There's no overlap at all there. The serve comes over. We're going to move as soon as that serve is contacted. And it's a pretty easy shift out to the right spot. So that's a lot to go through. We'll have a, a PDF of all these different rotations and, and where we're sitting with the arrows. Uh, so you can kind of take a look at them in a PDF after this. But that's a quick rundown of all the different rotations when we're running a 4-2 offense.